Hey, this is Gary. This is Mike. And Daniel. We're not professionals. We're just three addicts sharing our experiences, strength, and hope regarding recovery. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to other addicts and to practice these principles in our lives. Welcome to another episode of the 12th Step Podcast. This is Gary. And this is Daniel. And no mic today. No mic. Um, yeah. There's a whole story behind that. There is a whole story behind that. I'm wondering if we should spill the beans or let him do it. But we'll. we'll I think we'll give him crap when he comes back. I think so too. And then everyone will know what. We're I will just about. tease this much. It had something to do with him forgetting his birthday. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll let him tell you the story. Well, uh, it's good to see you, Daniel. Yeah. Been a hot minute. Uh, tonight we have a special guest with us. Yes. So Jeff is one of our listeners, and he. Uh, we know him through... Jeff was in my Sage group, yeah, uh, Sage One, and through that, and then uh, also, you know, 12-step. Right, and yeah. he's a listener to our podcast, and yes. he, had a, he had a suggestion for, for an episode, a topic of discussion, and because we knew who he was, we thought we'd invite him on and, and invite him to be part of the discussion. So we'll go ahead and turn a little time over to Jeff. He can introduce himself and kind of pose his question, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I guess I'm Jeff. Um, I've been, uh, working recovery for a few years now, I think going on four. Um, and I, I don't know how, what else, what, what type of information you guys want. No, that's, um, that's fine. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so I, I was, uh, thinking a little bit about, how about cycles and other things like that? And this this week, well, the, this last couple weeks, this this last month has been not too easy. And I've noticed um, that being a pattern in my life. Um, so, like, I've noticed that you know that springtime for me has been one of those cycles, one of those times of the year that just tends to be that much more difficult. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on it and see what you guys thought about springtime. About springtime or, or just the, well, I'm going to... Or, 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 cycle, or cycles in general. Sure. I mean, um, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, I think, I think there's some, I think I've noticed that a lot of addicts have, a, have an issue around spring. Mm-hmm. And I think it might go a little bit deeper than just that we're coming out of winter and um, there's more activating things out there. I mean, you, you see people start shedding, shedding their layers and, and that type of thing. But I think that it might go a little bit deeper than that. Yeah. I mean, I think you, you hit it kind of on the head there. There's part of that component, which is, you know, we're coming out of winter. We've kind of been in this hibernation mode where we're trapped in our homes. Mm-hmm. And now we can escape from that, you know, and then, like you said, people are starting to shed layers. I mean, in the winter, we have multiple layers on to keep ourselves warm, and then they start shedding that. We're kind of going into this renewal type thing, so I I think that's a component to it. It would would be interesting to know if people in the Southern Hemisphere have a corresponding... Yeah, the opposite. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because <laughs> to correspond with their springtime, their winter is more of our summer. Yeah. Right, right. It would just be interesting to know. I have so I think we can take this discussion into two different directions, mm-hmm. and I'd like to explore both of them. First one that I'd like to talk a little bit about is just patterns and cycles, mm-hmm. and then we can, and, and then I'd also like to talk about just kind of the nature of the season, spring yeah. itself. So, which one should we jump into first? Uh, we can do patterns and cycles. Okay. Yeah. And then we go to the, the other one. You know, so I was about three, I, I had finished my, I was just about to finish my second year mm-hmm. in recovery before I recognized that I had uh, an annual pattern. Mm-hmm. Now, by that time, I, I identified patterns that I had like weekly mm-hmm. or even daily, weekly, and then monthly. I, I could see that, okay, you know, I developed mm-hmm. these kind of habits of acting out and and then, you know, I would follow that pattern. So, you know, there'd be a specific day of the week that was more difficult than mm-hmm. others, or there'd be a specific time of day that would be more difficult than others. And then, and then I also found that my acting out greatly increased, uh, 
on a monthly cycle that corresponded when I would get paid. Yeah. You know? So I developed these patterns and I learned to recognize those. Now I've told this story before, but I have I have two I have two yearly cycles. Mm-hmm. There are two times of years that I really struggle. One of them is the spring, you know, and the other one actually is in the end of October going into the holidays mm-hmm. is, is another time when I'll, I'll feel myself ramping up. And it was kind of funny because I didn't recognize that there was a cyclical pattern there until one day, um, you know, the, like I said, I was about two years into recovery and my, I, this story still embarrasses me. I don't know why, but... So my wife brings home, have I told you the breakfast cereal story? Yeah. Yeah. So she brings, she went out and she bought some, you know, some Count Chocula, Count you know, Chocula the monster and, cereals. And, and so, in and, that. yeah, all that yeah. kind of stuff. And so I came home and I saw all these monster cereals on the counter mm-hmm. and it was activating. And I thought, oh my gosh, what does this mean? Like, like Count Chocula is doing it for me. That's a trigger. What does that mean? But, but that was the catalyst that made me think, oh no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's because that's an indicator that the season is starting, mm-hmm. you know, and I, and so I started watching myself and I could see that when Dick, de- cause Halloween was so is hypersexualized anyway, yeah. you know, and actually, as I thought about it, a lot of the first pornography that I would, I had gotten into was a lot of horror movies. Cause mm-hmm. there were, you know, yeah. and so when those kind of elements started to present themselves, I noticed, okay, I have a, a cyclical pattern. And when I notice that these things are starting to happen, it can be activating for me. And that was that was very enlightening. And, and I think that's the real answer to the springtime thing. Okay, is because it's act, it's it's like that precursor saying, okay, we're going into summer. We're going to see you know women mm-hmm. in s- smaller swimsuits. Mm-hmm. Let alone we go to the beach, we go to the lake, we go out out on boats, we go water skiing. Those activities or water sliding or or up to the canyons to go hiking up to waterfalls and stuff like that. It, or go to hot springs, which are situations where we're going to see individuals with wet, less clothing. And our brain knows this. And it's like, oh, it's starting to warm up. So that trigger, that first trigger starts mm-hmm. that, you know, that that first nudge to roll that boulder down the hill. Um, let alone, uh, besides that, the um, because it, we're going into summer, we see much different marketing ads on That's TV true. than mm-hmm. we would see, you know, in the fall going into winter. Those are more family oriented because we're moving into, you know, the holidays. But when springtime comes, we're seeing, you know, even a, a hamburger commercial. We're now seeing, you know, women that are wearing less clothing and being very pro- provocative and revealing, let alone the billboards change sure. as well. So there's a lot yeah. of this marketing that is affecting us and our you know, even though we're working on it, our brain is picking up on these things. Even if we're just driving down the freeway, it's noticing these billboards. Um, movies change. You know, we go from mm-hmm. family-oriented movies to more blo- blockbuster stuff that's showing, you know, women in risque clothing, let alone uh, there's more sexual scenes that show up in movies during that time. Uh, again, our brains pick up on those things. Do you know what I noticed in myself? Mm-hmm. One of the things that was kind of activating for me during this time mm-hmm. is um, pretty much every year around the first, I would commit that I was going to stop and I'm not going to do this yeah. anymore. And then I would white knuckle it. <laughs> yeah. And that would last maybe till about March, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah. And then, you know, there'd be lapses and relapses. And then and by that time, I'd be so frustrated, frustrated that... You know, now it's like, well, you know, just go for it, go for it, you know, screw this. And so, so that was also an interesting pattern that I had Mm -hmm. developed, you know, and, and even, even, you know, the, the mountain type of, of, uh, acting out really heightened for me because it's like, and I, I developed the cycle. It's like, well, you know, I did my best. I tried. And so I think that. Maybe that that at least was true for me. Maybe that's something that other people should consider too. I mean, yeah, first, I, I think. Go ahead. I think that that's actually. Oh, sorry. Um, I I think that that's actually one of those things that is it brings brings true for me. Um, and and I don't necessarily think that it's always been something associated with. Okay, I made a I made a commitment to not act out in January, but like I made some sort of. Um, uh, New Year's resolution. Sure. And I failed at it. 
and yeah. I failed at it, mm-hmm. you know? And, it, and, and so then I turned to acting out as a, as a solace to, um, to that, to that fact that I felt not good enough at that point in my life, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I just turned to acting out rather than, um, you know, continuing with that or realizing, oh, okay, well, it's just a New Year's resolution, which are silly to begin with. Um, and you really can continue just because you slip up on one thing or the other, you really can continue doing whatever it is you need to do. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I wanted to point out there is, you know, congrats at getting it to this point in your recovery where you're noticing there's a cycle going on. Yeah. Um, most often we're not realizing we're doing this. Um, this is something I've been working with, uh, you know, Shane, our fellow therapist with that over the years, we have programmed our brain to pay attention to certain things, you know, and I think the cycles are come about because of that programming. You know, we've programmed ourselves that at certain times of the year, once the, the count chocula shows up on the counter, I start going to XYZ habits, yep. which brings me closer and closer to my inner circle stuff. You know, and so my brain, you know, just walking in normally sees that and says, okay, it's time to activate I, all this. I'm yeah. now following this programming pattern. You know, and I think that might be the case here where a lot of us are going into spring and it sees, okay, you know, March 20th, it's now the first day of spring, go to this programming pattern. And then we start following that, and that's the point of recovery is breaking those cycles, reprogramming our brain, and creating a new cycle that's healthy. And these kind of annual cycles are harder to detect than others. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to pick up on a daily habit. Yes. You know, oh, mornings are rough for me, or or afternoons are rough for me, Mm -hmm. or even weekly ones, you know, yep, I know this, this, and this. But like I said, it was, I was going into my third year, I was finishing Mm -hmm. up my second year, getting ready to go into my third before I realized oh, this is happening, and I recognize that it happened last year. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I didn't real, you know, the first, the first time I just thought, I have no idea what's going on. This is just really rough, and then it eventually passed. But the second time, I was like, man, why is this happening again? And I started to look. So something that might be helpful, particularly for people who are in the early stages of their recovery, is to be mindful that you have multiple cycles or multiple patterns of behavior going on at the same time and if you feel yourself you know being activated kind of pay attention to that keep track of that kind of stuff and then we know when the next year kind of rolls around be be mindful of that yeah i mean when we're it's daily it's easy Uh because you know we'll have three or four occurrences within a week if it's weekly we can catch that fairly quickly because Within a month or two, we're going to have multiple occurrences. But when it's annually, you know, like we're saying, it's harder, you know, because once it's passed, we got to wait another year mm-hmm. before that comes back up. Um, but if you can get to a point in recovery where you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm feeling activated, you know, then tr- you can pay attention. Okay, what's doing it? What have I seen? What have I heard? What things? Um, it, it could be a song that only played around Christmas time, you know, that, that starts that, uh, kind of like the, the cereal. It could be a number of things that we got to pay attention to. You know, one of the, one of the things that was very activating for me was the smell of swimming pools. Oh yes. Yeah. You know, that chlorine and, smell. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, you know, I don't often experience that during the winter, but you know, when it started to warm up outside yep. and, you know, Memorial Day comes and goes, and then the pools are outdoor pools are typically open in our area. Yeah. Then it's like, oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, that that's it. I, that, again, I think that's another thing. Spring's like, okay, we're one step closer to the pools, one step closer to the, the lake or whatever, like, like that. Um, so it, it's v- definitely interesting. Uh, you know, with you of spotting this and kind of paying attention to this jeff what are some other things you've been corresponding to that is there certain things or is it just the season itself right now and i'm also interested in knowing what you're doing to deal with it yes (laughs) so so one of the one of the big things um for me i mean and and this and this is 
um, why I kind of picked up on that idea of the disappointment of um, the New Year's resolutions. But um, another part of it is is my my birthday. I mean, speaking of birthdays, right? I mean, with Mike not being here today, but um, my birthday hasn't always been um, the best time of year for me. Mm -hmm. And and I and I I don't know why I don't know and I've kind of gone back and looked at that a little bit. I think there's just a lot of kind of disappointing. Um, like I built it up bigger than it than it should have been mm-hmm. or whatever else, and and got disappointed qu- quite a few times growing up. And so I think that that also became kind of one of those moments. And my and my birthday's in 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 April. Okay. And so I think that 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 I think that adds to it. Um, for well, me. I- Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it does. My birthday's at the end of February. Okay. And so just like I would use New Year's Day as kind of a mark of New Year, mm-hmm. to, I would I would do the same thing with my birthday. And when that failed, you know, it was always and, and, and you know, even even my attempt, all of my stuff came to fruition and my attempt and everything was in April, mm-hmm. first of April. No, I, I think you, you kinda hit yeah. Again, on the head there. Yeah. So you, you, you know, it, again, Shane's one of his so the, s- sayings is, you know, uh, expectations are nothing more than premeditated resentments. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so that yeah, and so I think I, I've, I've, I've kind of built up a lot of resentment yeah. around around that time around that time of year, um, and I mean, even on top of that, when I first um, initialized my, I guess, kind of got deep into. Um, pornography um you know i mean before before i was 16 17 years old it was just kind of something that um i'd seen here and there but i think it really got cemented itself as an addiction um when i was about 16 and that's when my parents split right right i mean the week of my birthday is when they split and so i think that there's a lot that kind of has culminated in my life around that time um, and so, I, yeah, I think there's just a lot that kind of happened right, right around that exact same time. Um, and I think it, you know, it, it's, it's one thing I've kind of thought about that maybe it was even a pattern for my dad, um, mm-hmm. which, it, which, it, which got me thinking that maybe this is a bigger issue than just me. Um, you know, maybe this was a pattern for my dad. Maybe this was a pattern for, pattern for other people rather not just not just myself. You know, you make a good point. Um, holidays like Christmas mm-hmm. and all of that kind of stuff have a tendency to be difficult for people because they go into them with so much, so many expectations. Yeah. And we've had we've discussed that on previous episodes on on preparing yourself for the holiday and making a plan going into it and things like that. But I think there's a tremendous amount of wisdom in looking at the things that you ind- as individuals. Mm-hmm. You know, in Jeff's case and in my case, it's springtime because, you know, we have these yearly markers that come up then. But it'd probably be wise for anybody who's listening to stop and think, do I have premeditated resentments or do I have expectations mm-hmm. around my birthday or other holidays or events yeah. that that happen annually? And are those areas during the year or those times during the year activating is, mm-hmm. is, is that one of my yearly cycles? Cause it would stand to, I think he's uh, Jeff, I think you're, you're spot on there. And, and I think there's a lot of wisdom for, you know, anybody who's listening to kind of stop and think about, okay, what are the, what are the things that I do that we do every year? What are the traditions I do every year that have these expectations that mm-hmm. come along with them? And do I behave differently when they're not met? Well, I mean, just imagine young Jeff, you know, excited for his birthday you know, and things are happening, you know, we, we're all excited for our birthday. One is the presents, the cake, the celebration, and then it just doesn't meet your expectations, you know, and that happens year after year. And then, you know, 16, that's kind of a big birthday. You know, you get your, your driver's license, you can now be mobile without mom and dad, and then they get divorced. Yeah. You know, how, how does that, you know, affect a person? You know, those are those kind of negative programmings that get in there. And then we fall into you know, pornography and that addiction. Yeah, I mean, And it just, it helps us feel better. And so, but that teaches our brain, oh, hey, when this time comes around, 
this is how I can make it better. You know, even if you don't like those times of year, yeah. I mean, you might you might have a particular event during the year that you absolutely do not like, and then you'll spend all of this time dreading or yeah. all this negative anticipation to it, and that can be activating too. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, my birthday is at the end of December. I mean, it's right after Christmas, right before New Year's. It has always sucked. And on top of that, my mother can't even remember what day it's on. Well, yeah. there's no resentment there, is there? <laughs> I mean, I've had 46 <laughs> of them, and she still can't remember what day she birthed me. I mean, it just, it's, it's always been this thing. Um, and so, yeah, there was a lot of resentment. Like, I would get phone calls like, happy birthday. Um, my, day was, my birthday was yesterday. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Or happy birthday. It's tomorrow. The one and only time that I ever got a call from my mother on my birthday was for her to call me and tell me that she had cancer. It was fantastic. I don't even know how to respond to that. I, I don't either. <laughs> like, I'm like, you know, and, you know, my ex at the time was like, oh, is that your mom calling to wish you a happy birthday? Because she knows she never did it. And my mom was like, oh, crap, it's your birthday. And then hung, hangs up, like, after giving me this crappy news. Um, and And even then, it wasn't even, like, the doctor said it was possibly cancer. They hadn't even hmm. th- done the biopsy. She just went off the negative. Uh, oh my gosh, it's cancer. But that's how my birthdays always were. Interesting. And so I, I would hate, I, like, I hated my birthday. I always have. And I finally got to a point where it's like, why? It's my birthday. I'm going to make it what I want to do it. I don't care what she does or she thinks. But it always had that dread going in. And mine always started right after Halloween because I loved Halloween. But then after that, it was Thanksgiving and Christmas. And those were never enjoyable family Mm -hmm. get-togethers. And so I dreaded that. And Christmas was okay, but it always ended at noon because it was Grandpa's birthday after that. But then my aunts and uncles always fought. And it was just like I couldn't take my my Christmas presents to grandma and grandpa's house to play with them. These new toys I got because it's grandpa's birthday and we're there to celebrate that. You know, so it was just this weird Hmm. dynamic I had with my family, but it always fed into that. Um, And then looking in recovery, it's like, why am I allowing this to keep going? This program that's running in the back of my head, that's making those seasons horrible. Um, And I think that's what we need to do. Is we got to realize it first, mm-hmm. identify it, and then try to reprogram ourselves. Okay, how am I going to change this? How am I going to make it better? Right. Well, you can have things can mean what you want them to mean. Yeah. You know, you can you can create new memories. You can create new meaning. Jeff, tell us a little bit about um, now that you've discovered this pattern. Okay. Yeah. What What are you doing? What are you actively doing to? Because you know it's still pretty. New. Uh, new. We're still, we're just getting into spring, summer's, you know, another month or so. Uh, so what is it that you're doing to help yourself through this season? What have you found success in? So one, one of the things is, is that I sat down and I, I mean, the first thing I did was sat down and talked to my wife about this because I think that this is something that she needs to be aware of mm-hmm. um, as well as, you know, as well as myself. And so I think sitting down and having an honest conversation with her and being like, Hey, like this has always been a difficult time. And and we, and we, we talked about it for a while. Um, and I mean, that has just kind of brought to light. I mean, that I just need to be more cautious, more, more aware of what's, what's going on, uh, more aware and get back to some of those basic you know, first order changes that I implemented in the beginning and just checking in with her on a regular basis, checking in with, with, um, others in recovery and, and talking. I think that that, cause for me, it's like, it, if I'm, if I go silent and I'm secretive and I'm not talking to anybody, that's when I find myself in a world of hurt. Yeah. No, I, I think you, you were really smart in talking to your wife saying, Hey, I just realized this, you know, this is what's going on. I want you to be aware of it uh, because we need that support team. Absolutely. And your wife is the best person for that. She sees you day in, day out. Um, You know, Gary and I, we don't see you that often. So we we can't say, you know, you're kind of backsliding. You're off, man. What's up? Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, it's great that you have her. Yeah, and then and then the other thing is, I mean, I I sat down discussing with Shane too, and one of his things was just like he told me this. Well, and <laughs> he he's not always the gentlest, right? Oh, but we know. We we talk yeah, about we... him often. <laughs> We, um, we all he, use it. You know that, that I was being very selfish in being a glummy Eeyore around my birthday, <laughs> and that I needed to um, make sure that I let my wife and kids celebrate me and my recovery and who I yeah. have become, rather than let the other things that may be out there, the the things that I was holding on to. Um, dominate my my thought processes and my feelings. Just let let them let let that day be about. Let that day be a day for them to celebrate me and not be selfish and be glum and and you know. That. Uh, now that you've said that, I'm going to say. He must use that a lot because I heard that that story I, too. I heard it too, actually. <laughs> in fact, in fact, Jeff, you know, you telling your story reminds me that very early in my recovery, I looked at him once and I said, "You know, you're the perfect blend of gentle healer and sadistic bastard." Do you know that? <laughs> and it stuck. <laughs> and it stuck. I and don't know if you, we need to make a T-shirt I'm, for him. Yeah, he needs a T-shirt. It's going to be recover. You know, we should do that for a recovery merch or something. <laughs> You know, okay, so now, Daniel, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. All right, go for it. We've heard what uh, some of Jeff's strategies are. Let's hear what some of yours are. Uh, for this, for seasons or my birthday? Anything, what? anything, anything that you're going to, you know, with these, with these yearly cycles, what, yeah. what, what strategies have worked? Because, I mean, yeah, so strategies for me, I mean, first off, identifying it and then coming up with a safety plan or a game plan of what I'm going to do about it. Uh, you know, Mother's Day, for example, that was just recent. That's that's a hard one. Uh, my kids are gone. I don't get to see them. Uh, this last year was even more difficult because, you know, my grandmother had passed away and she was kind of my mother figure. And I always spent Mother's Day there. And so this time around, um, knowing that was coming, I made a plan for myself. I... You know, I did, you know, I went to church, but then after that, I came home and I worked on projects around the house, something that I could achieve and feel positive about and know that I had completed those things. And so there's those type of things. Uh, other things that is realizing, okay, this is happening. I'm going to make a new memory about that. So how can I make a new memory? Uh, for like my birthday this last year, uh, you know, I ended up, deciding to jump on an airplane, and I went to Disneyland by myself. I was able to afford that. I went for a couple of days, went by myself. There was no one complaining. No one was complaining about how long the lines were. No one was complaining. They were hungry or their feet were sore or anything like that. I just enjoyed and made a new memory. Um, I've gone on road trips where it's just been, I'm here, I'm feeling glum. I jump in my car, I go for a ride, I turn the music on and roll down the window and just enjoy you know, the scenery around me, the music that's playing, and the fact that, you know, it's another day that I've had recovery, and um, life is in a completely different place, and it's not that negative place that it used to be. Um, so those are some things that I've done. Uh, another thing I've done is I go kayaking, where I'll just grab my kayak, throw it on top of my vehicle, and I'll go find a lake or a river to come down and just kind of enjoyed that. Um, so it's always doing something, and but at the same time, it's either with someone or by myself. But I'm always trying to make a positive out of a negative. <coughs> Excuse me. So I guess I'll take a turn and put myself in the hot seat. I think the first thing that you guys, wherever you're at, need to do is, is become aware of it. Mm -hmm. And then once you become aware of it, then you can... Like Jeff said, start taking precautions. Yep. Okay, I'm going to start navigating this differently. And then and as you get a little bit more experience with that, then we're going to start doing what Daniel said. And we're going to start making new memories. We're going to start making yeah. it mean other things, you know, uh, so th these days aren't, so that it's not a bad time. Yeah. You know, so I have, I have, uh, I just completed 11 years 
And this year, this year going into the end of March, beginning of April, I knew that it was going to be, it was going to be different because for the first time since my attempt, see, so when I, when I attempted suicide and all my stuff happened, it was Easter Sunday. And then the following Monday was April fool's day. Mm. Okay. So that, that same combination hit this year. It's yeah. the first time that that's happened. And I saw that coming and I thought, well, I'll bet this is going to feel a little bit different this year. I might get triggered. <laughs> yeah, I says, you know, and, and like I said, I'm wrapping up 11 years, but I thought it's going to be Easter and then it's going to be April Fool's Day and this is probably going to land different. I yeah. should probably. And so then I said to myself, so what, do, uh, you know, kind of, I talked to my wife, I talked to my support group, talked to my friends and things like that. And then I asked myself, well, what do I want it to mean? Mm-hmm. You know, this is also an opportunity to to make it something different. Yeah. Maybe even make it something special or, you know, which is what we did, which is what we did. I thought, okay, you know what? I'm, Easter's always been kind of a hard season for me and, you know, kind of a hard day. I says, you know what? I'm going to start earlier and I'm going to, I'm going to make it a season a little bit more like Christmas and just observe things a little bit differently and try to, try to change the whole thing. Yeah. And some things worked out better than others, but on the whole, it was, it was absolutely fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic and very cathartic in a lot of ways. So, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for that, but, but it's taken, you know, it took me a few years to figure out that there was a pattern Mm -hmm. and then it took me a, a few years to to deal with it healthily. And then it took me a few more years to start making something new out of it. So I think one of the things as we go into this process, realize that recovery is a long process. It's a lifelong kind of a thing. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It is a marathon, not a sprint. And with these annual cycles that we have, Mm -hmm. you got to be patient with yourself. It takes time. It takes time, you know, because it's like, I've been doing this wrong for the last, you know, 20, 30 years. And, you know, I only been trying to make it right for the last 10, Yeah, you know? So it's one of the, I think one of the reasons why Shane says you can say you're cured when you've been healthier longer than you were sick. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so maybe there's something to that, but, but, uh, anyway, that's, that's my two cents on that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of skipped over the evaluating part. That's a part that I definitely always do. You know, I write it down. I try to, analyze what I'm feeling, mm-hmm. what's beneath those feelings as well, so that I know how to, you know, with this event, okay, how do I change it? Yeah. And but do I you need want, to know those things first. And it's a really good idea to even have that conversation with your, your sponsor yeah. or your therapist or your spouse. How did that go? Yeah. Let's talk about that. What did we like? Yeah. You know, have you ever heard of a stop, start, continue? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The run, stop, start, continue. Yeah. We need to stop doing this. We want to start doing this or we want to continue doing yeah. that. So I, I definitely, Jeff, you did a great job talking to your wife. Hey, I've noticed this, talking to her, and then going to talk to your therapist, Shane, uh, to talk about it. I mean, all great starts to a new beginning on, you know, circumnavigating these more difficult or challenging times that you've had so that you can have a new beginning and, uh, you know, more success, really. All right, Jeff. So I'm going to put you in the hot all seat right. one last time before we we wrap up. Are you ready? Yeah. So now having had this conversation, you know, um, next year, what do you think you're going to do differently? Um, I think that I'm going to prepare um, a little bit more leading into it um, because I because I recognized how activating it was this year. It's like, OK, now I know what's um what it's going to be like and now i can try and make some better memories um i think i think i did an okay job around my birthday after i got my sense slapped into me a little bit Mm -hmm. um but i think that i think that i can i can do better with that i can improve on improve on that and realize that this time of renewal and this time of new birth um around spring can be just that yeah and focus on my recovery rather than focus on the doom and gloom of my of my past 
Yeah. I think that's fantastic. It is. You know, another way to kind of reframe it is, you know, uh, spring is, you know, that, that rebirth, that renewal. Maybe spring can be that renewed commitment to your recovery. Sure. Where, where it's like, I'm, you know, I'm renewing my commitment that this spring, you know, going into spring this next year is going to be the best year I've had with my family and my children, even better than last year. You know, kind of like Gary's saying, you know, do the next right thing. You know, this could be the next right year or the yeah. next best year. Uh, of your life in recovery and maybe look at spring that way. Um, that's one thing I always try to do is reframe my negative thought on something to a positive. Well, I know something's coming up. I want to challenge both of you guys. All righty. I don't know what else is going on in your world, but I know that Father Day's, Father's Day is coming up. Yep. And I'm just going to challenge you to start thinking about it and, and do what you need to do to make it a healthy one, a good yep. one. Okay. Okay. That's, that's it. That's what I got. All righty. Well, right. well, thanks for uh, thanks for reaching out to us uh, about this topic. Yeah. It was great talking to you and and being willing to to call in and talk with us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, and you know what? I'll just I'll just open it up to uh, some of our other listeners. If you have a topic that you would like to discuss with us, reach out. We'll make an arrangement. You can call in, or if you're local, we can set something else up. But we would love to to have discussions with you as well. Yeah. I mean, we've done it with emails, but this is so much fun, more fun. It was, opinion. it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I and mean, you know, we need, we owe a, we really kind of owe a special thanks to Jeff because I think he's, he's got to be one of the first people that contacted us with a suggestion and then was willing to come on and talk to us about it. Yep. You know, we've reached out to some other people, but this was really nice. So thanks Jeff yeah. for being our Guinea pig. Hey, <laughs> anytime, anytime Gary. Okay. Anytime, Daniel. <laughs> All right. This is Gary saying, do the next right thing. And this is Daniel saying, find the humility in your recovery. Thank you for listening to the podcast. If you like this episode, please give us a five-star rating on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you find us. As a fellowship of recovering addicts, Sex Addicts Anonymous offers a message of hope to anyone who suffers from sex addiction. Check out saa-recovery.org.